All right, let's go ahead and get started. Howdy, howdy, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Shark and Bear, and welcome to the channel where today we're going to be checking out another uh, bullet hell vampire slap survivor esque game. This is Twilight Survivor. This one's been out for a little bit more than a week, I guess. I think I kind of missed whenever this one came out, uh, but I was in the mood for another, you know, vampire survivor esque type title, and so we have ourselves twilight survivor probably one of the most beautiful games in this genre to date so far you'll notice immediately since uh, as soon as we get to looking at the characters how amazingly good this game looks uh this is a game that's early access you have uh four characters to start out with i unlocked a fifth character uh we have lilia inu kage i really like that shiba inu chiba dog look not shiba just uh chubby and then we have Ember Fire as well as Dory Dory. Now, each one of these has a different weapon set in the sense that they have a different main skill. For instance, Dory Dory is a character who likes to armor up in spikes and roll around enemies. Uh, Ember Fire is a character who likes to basically anchor themselves in place and become a turret. Uh, Inu Kage has shurikens that he can throw and then retract back to him. And then Lilia is a hammer user who likes to hit the game get on the ground and use shockwaves. And then the last character I unlocked was Augustine. He uses a sword and he's able to actually slash things around him. And he has a chance to actually swing his sword a second time for every swing that he does. It actually gets pretty uh, ridiculous because it actually triggers off itself. So if he triggers a second swing on attack and then that attack also has a chance to trigger another attack. Uh, as you play these characters, you'll also see that they have talent trees here at the bottom. They start out with a default uh, top portion right here. These blue skills are the ones that are default. And then as you complete their lore, you'll come in here and see what the levels are for them. Uh, for instance, I've already marked one off for here, but then he also needs to complete five events and clear uh, the level Life Spring as his character. Uh, you will then get access to more of his skill tree. So we're gonna jump into one of the maps here, see how far we can get. I have, there are several levels here in the game already. I'm trying to decide which character I wanna play as. I think we're gonna go with Lilia. I'm a big fan of her shockwave attack. I do have her first set of uh, skills unlocked here at the bottom. Not all of them, mind you, but uh, a good bit of them. Uh, so if you like the content and you want to see more games like Twilight Survivor here on the channel, feel free to like and subscribe to the channel. It really helps me out. As always, I hope everyone is having a fantastic day. And let's jump into it. I'm going to go ahead and try to knock out the last level. So right now, it looks like we have four levels currently available to us, I assume, because this is an early access. Uh, there are going to be more maps added in. We in the Verdant Plane. The Verdant Plane has like four different options. So every area has like different like story things that you want to do. Uh, we are currently at the Goblin's End, which I believe is the last map for Verdant Plain before we go on to the next map. So we're going to jump on into this. Alright, so here we are. I actually restarted my match because I messed up already. I don't know what this chicken is for. Young warrior, you're willing to become my dis disciple. I shall bestow upon you a great power requiring only a small, harmless price. Oh, so they gave us like a free item. Chicken's God, Chicken God's Protection offers all the points from this game in exchange for Divine Blessing. When your HP is less than 30%, all HP is restored, although this perk will no longer apply. What do you mean? Offers all points from the game in exchange for Divine Blessing. I don't know if I want that, though. That sounds awful. Uh, so as you can tell right here, uh, in the bottom right-hand corner, we do have a auto-aim option, but you can totally choose to uh, take the auto-aim off if you want. At any point in time you want to see what synergizes with what, you can actually opt to um, hit the L2 button, and uh, it'll show you what synergizes with what. Unfortunately, you can't do that while you're looking at these skills. Uh, but yeah, whenever you open this up by right here, I, I can see what synergizes with what. As long as you found, like, the correct combination beforehand. So that's good to know. I'm going to go ahead and take the Power Dagger here. And the Power Dagger and the uh, the Throwing Dagger that I have, they synergize well, so they're going to make another item. Um, I'm also going to choose to see... Let's go with the Explosive Trap. I want to see how many Synergy items we can create. Uh, I have yet to make a full set of them, but mostly because we hadn't had all of the recipes yet. Now all we need to do is find all of the requisite passive items, if we can. Uh, magical stopwatch, what does that go with? That doesn't go with anything we have. We'll go ahead and pick up Hammer Strike level 2. If we don't see an option we like, we'll go and try to find one we do. 
Uh, we also have Giant Cannon. Giant Cannon gives a Temporal Shroud. I do love this skill. Giant Cannon fires off those things right there, and they are super cool. Uh, let's go ahead and go with... What did Lifeblood go with? I don't think I had Lifeblood. I'm going to go ahead and... Can we, does one... See, unfortunately, I think I'm about to lock myself out because so, I don't have any more but one reroll. Oh, how I don't want certain skills. Uh, what does Life Flood go with? Nothing they want. Oh, that goes with a sword. Coin Pouch goes with Golden Radiance, and Poison Blade goes with Air Blast, which we do not have. Um, out of all these, I'll probably take that one, even though I do not want it. Sometimes you gotta kind of roll with what you don't want. Uh, Power Stone, we're definitely taking that. Because Power Stone uh, lends itself into Fireball. And a Temporal Shroud goes into our giant cannon. So we have all of the items we're gonna have for the rest of the game. As we level these up, we're gonna unlock the synergies for them. Uh, so we're gonna go ahead and uh, work on our active skills. Because the active skills is what's going to get you your combos, essentially. Uh, since we've been... Yeah, we're going to do Blade Dagger. It doesn't really matter. And we have our first boss up, I just now realized. As we kill the first boss right here, they do come in at different points in time. I don't know what the timer or interval is for them. Uh, but I do know they come in quite regular. And once we die, we'll get a level up reward as well as a gravity beacon, which will draw in all the XP orbs that have fallen on the ground. So that's pretty cool. Uh, there's also actively a dash with the R2 or the right trigger, whatever it is to you. And now we have our first, uh, basically, uh, fusion skill, uh, chain fireball. So our fireball turns into continuously launches fireballs at the nearest enemy. That's pretty cool. You don't lose items, just your fireball will transform. So you don't actually like, get an extra place on your ability bar, which is kind of sad, but it is what it is. So we're gonna go ahead and hit this. Looks like we got uh, level ups in all these three skills, Power Stone, Holy Cross, and Giant Cannon. That's nice. We'll go ahead and work on getting our active skills leveled up. So next time we leveled up, we should have the option to level up our hammer even further which is pretty cool because our hammer is pretty cool. Instead of doing a shockwave that goes in one direction, it'll do one uh, giant shockwave that'll head in every direction from underneath us. And this uh, fireball skill is pretty nice. It has, it's just doing continuous damage. As you can see, we now have some ranged enemies that do some AOEs on us, but as long as we keep moving, we are in a fairly good state. Sorry about that. If you heard that, that is my alarm going off. Let me know. It's not a wake up, but I'm usually awake by this point in time, so I don't know why I have that alarm set. All right. Uh, go ahead and take care of Explosive Trap, and I believe that's pretty much close to everything that we needed to have leveled up. All we need now is to have the uh, evolutions, and I think the only evolution we're really missing is our minds won't be leveled up, I don't believe. But everything else is good. So it looks like we're going to have our second boss here. This is only a 10-minute match. Uh, I believe that's when the boss of this one comes out. I think uh, the matches vary in length. I've had one that lasted about 15 minutes. Uh, but you do gain XP at quite a rapid rate, so... You'll never be under-leveled whenever you're doing these things. It really depends on what your um, what skills you have, and if you remember your synergies and stuff like that. For me, I have a page open where I written, wrote down the synergies that I'm aware of. Uh, just because you can access this during the game, but you can't access it when you're looking, like leveling up and picking out your skills, which is kind of a weird oversight, if I'm being honest. Because some of these skills kind of look not entirely same Z, but kind of same Z in the way that, like, oh, is that Power Stone or is that something else? And because uh, Power Stone is like a diamond, I think. And then there's another one that looks like a diamond. And I actually got confused a couple of games ago and picked the wrong thing and never got my fusion skills. 
And since you don't get to choose another active ability to replace another one, once your skill slots are full, they're full, that's it. It, it can really be unfortunate for you. Alright, so we now we have three fusion skills. And we are working on the last one, I believe, that we're going to be getting this time. Which we need to get, oh, there we go, fission laser. Fires one massive labor, laser beam in a specified direction, that's nice. Uh, we'll go ahead and work on Temporal Shroud. Oh, I like the way that looks. That's pretty dope. Now we have four out of our five skills as fusion skills, which is nice. That's so dope. I love it. I'm gonna actually uh, use that in a in like uh, manual aiming here in a little bit whenever we get to the final boss of the area. I'm gonna go ahead and work on our crit damage increase. I don't know if we can actually crit it all. Are we critting it all? Uh, yes, we are critting every once in a while. I just saw that crit for 420 damage. So increasing our crit chance or crit damage is gonna be fine for later. I'm going to go ahead and turn auto aim off. I want to target this directly at the boss. I want to see how fast we can melt it. Uh, which direction is he coming from? There he is. Oh, we're melting him. I can tell. See, one more set of lasers. I hope we get, get him. Oh, man. Two lasers and he was gone. I mean, there's a lot more else going out, but still... Uh, I'm going to go with Temporal Shroud, just because that means people are getting lasered for far longer. I'm going to go ahead and turn on on the again, just let it hit whatever it wants to hit. Some enemies will die, and they'll drop hazards on the ground. As you'll see, every once in a while, there'll be a little puddle. They're not super egregious, like there's one right here to the right. If I step in that, or in that one right there, I'll take a little bit of damage, but... It did one damage. I can't even tell that it did any damage. I assume as you get further in the game, uh, you'll be hit a lot harder by stuff like that. You'll also see that there are purple orbs right there. That's the gravity that brings in all the uh, extra XP. These little blue ice cubes right here, they'll freeze everything around you. But they have to be fairly close in order for that to work. And it doesn't freeze bosses, so that's good to know. There's also a bomb icon that clears the screen, essentially. And I believe that's all of them. There's the potion one. But uh, I'll let you guess the potion one does. No spoilers. Um, go ahead and start picking up this temporal sword here. And I'll also pick up the XP. And more temporal shroud. And we're just gonna work our way around. We got about four minutes left and we're already pretty much max build. After you've hit the max level and filled up all your skills, any level after that is going to just net you either a healing or a bag of money, which the money is actually the meta currency for leveling up your skill trees uh, in between matches on your characters. So now that we have the poison blade there, we've just got to fill out, uh, I believe, uh, spectral shroud as well as the one that gives us revives. Do not like this bee. This thing runs fairly quickly. We'll put some distance on it. Just want to hit it with some laser beam. There we go. And we got three levels of Holy Cross, so I believe that's everything that leveled up. Okay. Longsword. Okay, now that's everything. Any level up after now will give us coins or healing. And I'm gonna check, I'm gonna choose coins every single time. Because I love currency. And we'll just wait our way through these enemies. Now I will say if you're not leveling up efficiently, if you don't know the fusions, you will feel the lack of damage. And these enemies will actually dogpile on you fairly quickly if, you, uh, if you're not synergizing very well. So it's very important that you figure out what the synergies are because the game doesn't tell you almost any of them. you got to figure out what they are yourselves. And once you've figured them out, 
they get added to your library. So as you can tell, like right here, we really don't have that many of the fusions figured out. We still have more than half uh, left to figure out. We either don't have the weapons unlocked yet because they're tied to other characters or progression throughout the levels themselves. We have about two minutes left in the match here, which is a-okay. I wonder how much damage I would take if I just waited through these enemies. Let me see. If it'll let me take the damage. I'm just gonna wade into them. I'm just gonna I'm gonna wade into them. Let me, let me just walk into these enemies here. Let me let me just walk into the end. I don't wanna wanna walk. Okay, so we're taking some damage. It actually looks like it's regening fairly quickly because we also have like a regen on our character. That's part of her toolkit. Where is this enemy at? There he is. Can we melt him? 859 damage. Wow, one of the shots did 859. Like, it's funny, because, like, the other ones were, like, uh, 78, 96, stuff like that, and that one does 830, uh, 879. And we're almost through it. I think there might be one other boss that shows up. Occasionally there's a there's a goblin that shows up with a money bag. And if you chase him down, he'll hit every time you hit him, he'll drop money for you. Um, but uh and if you manage to kill him, he'll drop some extra goodies. Uh, but it doesn't look like this happening. It looks like we're going directly into the last boss of this area. This one is actually the uh, only one I know so far that's like a multi-phase. It starts off as the Goblin Archmage, and then the se second level is a a boar, more or less. Luckily for us, we have a health potion right above us should we take some unnecessary hits. Uh, it looks like we have... She summoned some other allies. Okay, so the Goblin Archmage is out, and now we're fighting the Boar King, which I believe is our final fight here. You have to be careful, because I believe one of the functions of this boar is that it will separate, as it has now, and then turn into many boars. He's no longer going full boar. All right, we've dealt with the mini boars. I was gonna keep hammering on him. I'm making it look easy. It's kind of easy already, but it's still fun. And we did that. That was pretty quick. What do we get here? We got something new. Uh, diligence, one percent attack power for every five hundred enemies defeated. Oh, that's pretty cool. We got unlocked a Quent card. That's interesting, I guess. And there we go. We completed the stage. That is the last stage. I got a C ranking? How does an A, two Bs, and an S equal a C? That's bullshit. Uh, we also got achievements for unlocking the fusions of everything else that we just got here. Collect and equip the magical cards during your adventures to aid you in your time and your quest. You can also play it with friends during your free time. Uh, diligence. Okay, so we unlocked that one. We also got uh, Pigeon Soup, which is 10% uh, attack, defense, and health. And there's new entries for all the fusion skills we unlocked. We also unlocked a new weapon, Ice Shards, uh, Phase Boots, Charm of Speed, and we got a new character, Aldrea, the Observer, a ranger who records the continent's history through songs and poems. And we got 2,664 more coins we can go ahead and claim the more coins in our achievements over here anything that's unclaimed we can collect hold down y and i'll collect additional coins which apparently we also unlocked a 15 percent attack quent, quent card 
and reinforcement cards. So those were rewards that we got were more cards. Will the slime one percent chance to create a pool of poison upon defeating an enemy? Okay. Gains an armor and at periodic intervals to block incoming projectiles. Inflict splash damage of 360 radius three times at regular intervals. That's a lot of things. Dashing will deal damage and knock enemies back. Does not apply to Ember Fire, Inukage, and Aster. Man, we got a whole bunch of rewards for that one. That's nice. So now we can actually press up on our D pad here and then basically equip these cards for a cost. So we can only equip one and then we have to pay money for the additional three slots. And they come in different varieties. They tell you, they don't say that they have uh, like a limit to how many purple cards you can equip. So that's pretty cool. And then we've also unlocked Aster. Oh, hello, Mama. Aldrea, no, Aster, Aldrea. Uh, ranged high movement, enhanced projectiles. Shoots three arrows uh, across an arc in an indicated direction. I can't wait to give her a try. I'm gonna try playing her on my next match. Uh, looks like she has herself her own skill tree. I'm gonna go ahead and start opening it up. It seems like most everybody's skill tree is fairly basic on the basic level. They do all have like one thing that'll set them apart. Like here we go, enhancement specialization, 50% flight speed for her projectiles, 30% flight speed. That's too good. We're gonna take that one. And then what is this one? Aldrea will now draw her bow as best she can, enhances scatter shot and split shot projectile count plus one. Go ahead and pick that up. It looks like we're going to be short on grabbing our other two skills. So it is what it is. I can't wait to check her out. Uh, that being said, if you like the content and want to see more gameplay from games like Twilight Survivor here on the channel, feel free to like and subscribe to the channel. It really helps me out. As always, I hope everyone has a fantastic rest of your day, and I will catch you all in the next video. Later.